Hi everyone, my name is Nico and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video we'll be diving into the process of bringing characters to life using Adobe Mixamo and Unreal Engine. This is a sneak peek of the Udemy course, Crafting Environments and Animation for Unreal Engine. There are 5 hours of footage in this course, the link is provided below. If you like my channel, please hit like and subscribe, it does go a long way. I hope you enjoy the video and bye for now. This is our friend, uh, Mannequin. So the, purpose, so the purpose of today's lesson is about replacing our Mannequin. We could actually keep it um, and just uh, give it an animation if you like. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to explore um, Adobe's um, Mixamo uh, option. We do have the option of using MetaHumans from Unreal Engine itself from the Epic Games um, marketplace. However, um, let's explore, let's deviate a little bit from um, Epic Games and try something else. The process is very similar anyway, so it's not too different. So what we want to do is we want to give our mannequin a friend right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to uh, Mixamo. So if you type in mixamo.com, log in, and you should see this particular page. So there's two main menu items, two main tabs at the top, characters and animations. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to characters first. So we're going to click, select one of many characters that are there. They're pre-built. Remember, you don't have to pay for this, so do not worry. Um, over here on the right-hand side, you can see um, one of them. Um, so once we select our character, we're going to basically download our character. Then we're going to move over to animations. And here we have a whole lot of different movements. Some of them are hilariously funny. Um, select which movement you want. And then what we're going to do is we're going to download the characters and download the animations separately. And then we're going to combine the two in our virtual environment. So let's go ahead and go to characters. I want to look for uh, the SWAT character. So what we want to do is we want to download the SWAT guy character. So we go ahead and hit download. Uh, we can leave T-Pose there and we're going to download an FBX file. We can go to 7.4, which is a high resolution one, I guess, um, and hit save. So it's going to ask you where you want to save it. So save it somewhere where you know where you can go and fetch it a little bit later on. We're going to add a few more characters to this scene as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that one. Uh, okay, so after SWAT, we could end up getting something a little bit uh different so we've got a, an army person so we can go a little bit more adventure if we like okay erica the archer i like her she looks fun to have here in the scene uh she's got arrows and a bow so that makes her makes it really interesting so that's going to be good so we can go with um erica okay great thank you erica so let's download Erica. Okay, so we've got Erica. She looks like a powerful warrior, which is fantastic. So that's what we want. Okay. Let's see who else we can download. We can go cartoonish, but it's not going to fit in our scene. We could do a bit of a parody if we like with that, uh, with Big Vegas, for example. I really like this one. <laughs> Um, yeah, when that's not going to fit in the scene at all. Uh, we've got a science, a Drake or what is this? A vampire or some sort. We got this guy here. Looks very scary. Um, or we can stick to, okay. Oh, there seems to be another powerful female character here that we can add in as well, uh, which is great. Arisa. Okay, great. So we're going to download Arisa as well. Now, what I like to do with all my uh, downloads, I like to put CH as the 
prefix to all my characters. And uh, for animations, I usually place A in. So the first two characters of those two things, that's how I name all my assets. So CH underscore, then what, what it, with freestyle describing what it is. Uh, and then numbers like one, two, three, as in different versions of that same character. The same thing with animations. I tend to do the same thing there. So let's find another character as well, maybe a sci-fi character. So that's adventure. So we got two. Um, we got um, Erica, we got Arisa, and we have the SWAT guy, oh, Vanguard. You would gotta have some someone that looks a bit like that. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So let's go ahead and we'll grab this one as well. Okay. So once we filled our um our director with a bunch of characters, we can then go back and dust uh, placing them inside our virtual environment. So once we've find, found out all the characters that we want, we can go to animations. Now in animations, this is where we're going to download the actual animation itself, a sequence um, from the list of a list of animations that are here on the screen. So we can collect anything we want. So what we're looking right now is to find a animation that we can place on a loop inside our environment and usually they are the ones where people are standing um, and breathing and not doing much at all so that means that if you do loop them it doesn't look out of sorts so for example yeah standing with a briefcase that's interesting but we don't have a briefcase so this is going to look strange uh, let me see what else we can find here I like this one standing with a thumbs up. That's great. But again, different different setting altogether. So let's just go ahead and I'm just going to go and type in idling, uh, idle. Okay. All right. So that one looks really interesting. It looks like, looks interesting enough that it's not just not doing anything. It looks like he's got his front foot forward, back on his, his, his body weight is in the back leg and he's just breathing. So what I'm going to do is going to, download this without the skin because we might want to apply it for different purposes so we're going to go ahead and select 60 now we don't need 60 frames because there's not much happening here for 60 frames but nonetheless let's go ahead and hit download all right and again it's going to ask you where do you want to download it we prefix it with a n underscore and then we can just um give it any any file that we wish after that Okay, so once we're done here, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our Unreal Engine. And we are going to create uh, two folders. But first, we're going to put everything in one folder. We're going to call this Actors, as in Characters. So now we've got Anim and we've got Characters. So inside Characters, we're just going to go ahead and add a bunch of different um imported characters that we just saved so just collect all the ones that you that you have saved and just drop them here in the characters now uh a good way of organizing this is to have a folder for each so therefore all the materials and meshes and textures don't mix some of the characters are named very well so they're prefixed with the actual unique character others are just not and therefore you're going to mix the different textures etc it's going to be a bit of a mess but for the sake of um, progress, uh, just collect everything and dump it inside this particular directory. Um, and let's set the defaults in there and uh, import all. Uh, it's going to do something. Yep, it's moving ahead. So now that's just basically downloading characters that you saved from, uh, from Mixamo. Now this is just a warning. So let's just have a quick look at it. I tend not to just bypass these things. Okay. Okay, so it's giving me a bit of a warning, but that's okay, nothing drastic. So if we go back to the content draw, here it is. This is what I meant by being careful with, you know, uh, your imports. Notice how everything is kind of, it looks a little bit messy, but some of these characters you could actually see that you know they've, they've been prefixed like for example this one here vanguard so you can see all the vanguard textures and all the vanguard meshes others have a specific number in front of them which is good a recess fine but then you've got with things like arrow and arrow diff you don't know who that belongs to so if you've got a, like 100 characters in here it's going to take you a long time to figure out 
which one do you want to modify for the particular character? So it becomes a little bit messy. So for now, we'll move away from character. We're going to go to anim, uh, animation. And here we're going to do the same thing. We're going to right button click, uh, import, and we are going to find our, um, our animation. And now notice how these two buttons here, put all and import, are not highlighted. That's because we don't have a skeleton. So we did not import it with skins. So what we can do is we can just basically select any one of them. So we've got Arisa, we've got Erica with the bow, SWAT, Vanguard, and so forth. So they've been, they've been all listed here because we've saved them just earlier. So what we can do is say select uh, Erica and we, let me just do that, Erica, and import all. Now we should have Erica there. So what we can do now is simply place Erica next to our uh, stand-up bloke, the white mannequin that we've had for some time there. So just going to click um, the animation, drag, and drop. There we go. So now it's facing the wrong way. So let's just straighten that up. So now that's interesting. So notice that um, Erica fits the scene really well. Mannequin Man, not anymore. So let's just retire him. Now we've got her. Now this looks really, really compelling. However, it does move away from the realism because, and this is a thing, when there's a lot of um, light happening, you can start seeing textures like this that are a little bit too smooth, not rough enough. And when you come in a bit closer as well, you end up seeing the face. Now, this particular setting, this environment, I'd have to really dim even more in order to get um, the ambient style I want so that I don't actually expose some of these plastic details from this particular import. Now, of course, you can find better characters with more details, but this particular one doesn't actually suit the scene. It's not the right one for this particular scene. So either I have to change the scenes to suit the character or change the character to suit the scene. What I'm going to do is I'm going to basically remove her, force delete, and remove the character out of the scene. And I'm going to try it again. So I'm going to import, find the, uh, the animation, and I'm going to give it a different skeleton now. Let's go with the SWAT. And yep, he should be here. Now let's bring him across. Okay. All right. Now, I believe he suits the scene much, much better. Um, not because of any other reason other than the fact that his face is covered. I don't, um, his costume and his outfit seems to be of high detail, high resolution. So therefore, if you do zoom in and do some uh, uh, close-up camera work, it is convincible. You can convince the, the audience that this is actually more real than not. So now notice that the, he's facing the wrong way. So you can adjust that by simply going ahead and selecting zero for... Um, well, uh, panning up and down, green, zero, and minus 90, so that we have, is facing forward, good. So there we have it. Now, I don't want to place him dead bang in the middle. It looks a little bit rehearsed. So what I'll do is I'll move him a little bit here to the side, right? Let me go ahead and um, and capture a high resolution screenshot. So if you want to do that, let me do that once more and a little bit slower. Just go here to the burger menu item icon to scroll all the way down, go to high resolution screenshot and it will screenshot whatever is on that particular scene. Now, these items here, these grids, if you want to get rid of them, just go ahead and click G. So if you click G, the letter G on your keyboard, they all go away and now you can have a clean screenshot. So let me remove that. Let me do one from a different angle. 
like so with the with a lantern. Yeah. Yeah, that will work. And now we are going to press play. So if we go up here and hit play. Notice how now he is breathing in and out. See, now that you can place that on a loop and therefore that's not going to impact your uh, your scene, your cinema scene. All right, guys. Well, that's it for now. And I'll see you in the next session where we're going to start creating some sequences and scenes. And we're going to then basically move from there to a post-production phase where we're going to basically edit it and put it in a, um, in a scene.